all we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain everlasting is thy reign in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and in your spirit dear brothers and sisters in just a few minutes in our psalm response to Psalm 32, we will say together, blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Let us begin our mass by praying that we would be among those whose sins are forgiven. You are the word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are the bread of life that nourishes the world. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of Christ and attain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. This is different. Let's read this one. Get the pictures. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden of, at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. 
Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those whose fault is taken away, whose sins are covered. Blessed, blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes uh, not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guilt. Blessed are those <coughs> whose sins are forgiven. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you, look, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in times of stress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. You are my shelter. From distress, you will preserve. Preserve me. With glad cries of freedom, you will ring my round. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise During the course of the church's year, we celebrate the Virgin Mary under many titles. Certainly her most important title is as the Mother of God. We remember her as Our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Good Counsel, Our Lady of Perpetual Help. The titles of her apparitions, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Fatima. These are just examples. One title that has no feast day is Mary as the new Eve. And because in the first reading today, 
we hear about the action of Eve that brings about original sin. It's good for us to reflect on how Mary is the new Eve in light of the sin of Eve herself. Both Mary and Eve were created full of grace, but their response to that grace was very, very different. Only one of them remained obedient to God's plan, God's instruction and direction. It was Eve who facilitated Adam approaching the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, eating the forbidden fruit, and introducing the original sin that still characterizes our world today. It was Mary who facilitated Jesus Christ approaching the tree of the cross and authoring at that place our redemption. Even back in the second century, when St. Justin Martyr reflects on Mary as the new Eve, he reminds us that each of them acted willingly. Neither was coerced, neither was forced, neither was obligated to do what they did, but both freely and fully chose what it was that they did. Through their actions, Eve conceived death, and Mary, in the person of Jesus Christ, conceived life. There are multiple times when St. Paul describes Christ as being the new Adam, repairing, and even more so, what Adam damaged in the Garden of Eden, and then Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, infusing new life into the mystery of our faith. And so for Mary to be considered the new Eve, it is the most logical and obvious extension of that revelation of Christ as being the new Adam. So as we think today of these two women who made very, very different choices in response to God, let us never be like Eve saying no to God's plan and direction for us. But let us always be like the new Eve, like Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, saying yes to all of God's awesome plans in our lives. We approach our God and make known to him all of our various prayers and petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may pass from hatred to love, from war to peace, and from sorrow to joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the attentions of Pope Francis, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Jonathan's intentions and in thanksgiving for his spiritual guidance, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. In, thanks, in thanksgiving for Saints Francisco and Saint Jacinta's examples of holiness, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions that Pilgrims for Peace have brought from home and those petitions that they hold in their hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this Friday, when our thoughts turn to the sorrowful mysteries of the Rosary, we pray in sorrow for the terrible trauma and sexual abuse inflicted on so many by Catholic clergy and leaders of the Church. 
We pray for all victims that they will receive the healing that Christ wants them to receive, and that every form of sexual abuse will be completely eradicated from the face of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In confidence, we make these and all of our prayers in the holy name of Jesus Christ through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God. Amen. Amen. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with mother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me at this very moment now. With every step I take, let this be my soul. Long vow to take each moment, live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it be with me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we offer you these gifts of reparation and of praise, so that in celebrating this feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary and praise you for your gifts. She, receiving your word in her immaculate heart, merited to conceive him in her virginal womb. And in giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church. She, in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all people as her children, born to eternal life through the death of Christ. She, when the apostles were awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one, united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples and thus became the model of the suppliant church. She then finally elevated to the glory of heaven, surrounds with her maternal love the pilgrim church, and lovingly directs her steps to the heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Sanctus. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabamon, Plenisum Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, O Sana in Excelsis, Benedictus, Qui Venit in Nomine Domini, O sana in excelsis. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. 
Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the, blo the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. But do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, Antonio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all that parted into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 